conversation with uh, Guillermo Cuitca. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Carolina Scarborough, and I'm the assistant curator for public programs here at the America Society. Um, First, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Jaime Iglesias Luquin, our director, and my colleague uh, Diana Flato for their continued support. And I would also like to thank our speakers, Alejandra and Guillermo. Thank you so much. Um, I would also like to remind everyone about the exhibition downstairs, Alice Miseli Proyecto Chernobyl. It's currently open, uh, you know, and please, after the um, after the conversation, you can walk down there. The gallery is open for everyone. And it will be open until January 25th, 2020. Um, then I also wanted to invite everybody here to our upcoming programs. We have one on November 13th. Uh, it's going to be a panel discussion on modes of documentation and photography. And then on December 11th, uh, we will have the film screening of La Suplicación, uh, Voices from Chernobyl, based on the Nobel Prize winner of literature, uh, the book of Voices from Chernobyl by Svetlana Alexievich. And I'm delighted uh, that America Society is presenting Alejandra Sieber's uh, work and this invaluable publication. Alejandra is part of an important generation of contemporary Argentinian artists alongside Guillermo Cuitca, who continue to reinvigorate the art scene. And we are very lucky to have both artists here this evening and to share their creative spirits and shed light on uh, Alejandra's work. Um, so, I am pleased to present our speakers now. Please join me in welcoming them. Um, hello, everybody, and um, thank you, Caro, and uh, thank you, Ale, and thank you, Guillermo, for joining here. Um, so, we're going to try to make this conversation as informal as possible, like we Argentinians do. <laughs> and I think it's... Um, uh, it's a it's an honor for me, obviously, to open. This is my first panel in which I am participating, and it's an honor to do it with Alejandra, who is a fantastic artist and a dear friend. Um, I think it was uh, perfect uh, that we had the opportunity to do it with Guillermo, who is obviously a key figure of the contemporary art scene in Argentina. Um, a leader of, you know, painting and the way we keep thinking about painting nowadays, which is something that Alejandra also does, and that is fantastic. And also, it's great to have him here because uh, he showed at the America Society in 1989, so 30 years ago. Uh, this year, we have uh, 30 years since um, Guillermo showed here. It was the first exhibition of Guillermo in New York. Um, and also 20 years since Alejandra moved to New York. So I'm hoping that uh, throughout the talk, uh, we can comment uh, a little bit about this relationship in between uh, Argentina, Buenos Aires, and New York, and how that played into your lives and your careers and your work. But before that, I thought it would be interesting to tell a little bit about how you met and the role of the Cuica Fellowship, La Beca Cuica, for those who don't know it is uh, one of the most important spaces for artists um, education in Argentina and has a very innovative uh, format. Um, and I think it's also important to talk about uh, its influence in the Argentinian scene and how Guillermo feels about that and Alejandra as a previous participant. Well, hello. Um, I also want to thank a little bit to you, a little bit, not a lot, to, <laughs> to Aime uh, for making this happen with Carolina and Guillermo. I was so lucky that you were here passing by New York at this time. It makes me feel very comfortable. And uh, I also want to thank all the team that worked in the book, uh, the editor, uh, Alejandro Cesarco, the amazing texts written by many friends and people I knew all over my time in the arts. Ines is here, Ines Katzestein and Karen Schneider. And um, I also want to thank Other Means, which are the amazing designers uh, that interpreted 
the way I work in an amazing way and gave us space for the book to flow in a way that I totally feel mine and yours. <laughs> and then I also uh, would like to thank Rosario Guiraldes that introduced me to other means and thought that this was possible because I think if not other means wouldn't have paid attention to me. <laughs> and after this, the question was? <laughs> Going back to the questions. And yes, sorry, I jumped right into the questions. Um, uh, I hope that, uh, I was hoping we can go back to the book and comment a little bit about the content later yes. on, but I thought it was important to also um, talk about uh, how you two met uh. to also explain uh, to the audience here and those that are seeing us on streaming uh, how perfect it is that we have the opportunity to have Guillermo in conversation with you yes. to present this book and how uh, the two things relate and the experience at Debeka Kuitka. Yes, I think uh, we met briefly... <laughs> Long time ago. <laughs> in a recital of prints. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> in in River Plate. Yeah, I was there. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then and then yes, well the young um, the the young artist program um, is a program that Guillermo by his own initiative uh, began to propel in Argentina in a scene where there wasn't uh, as much things as now we have. Um, before that, I, I was going to the um, to the Escuela Prilidiano Puyredón of Arts, which was like a kind of uh, not even university level. It was more like, a, and it it wasn't very good. And then it's very usual in Argentina that you go to the studios of artists that you choose to be under their mentorship. And Guillermo did uh, did begin this program where. By his selection, he would uh, take a reduced number of artists and give them uh, the opportunity to work in a studio and with uh, critiques that would happen once a week and also the opportunity to meet a, a lots of persons, critics or, or international visitors to Argentina that would go and, and thought that that was a place to visit and that... Um, and that exposed us to to the world in a way, in a little way, a glimpse of uh, people coming to see what we were doing. And, and at the beginning, I think it was more like uh, dedicated to painting, but then, uh, yeah, then yeah. It changed a lot. Uh, the studio program was created in, in 91. It was a long time ago, and, uh, and, and, and Alejandra was in the... In, in what is now called Beca Cuitca, but I think I was the very last person in call it that way. It was always had a more descriptional uh, name, like um, Programa de Becas para Artistas Jóvenes, or um, uh, pro, uh, el, el nombre fue variando, pero la gente, sorry. The name was uh, was changing, but people would, would yeah would call it Beca Cuitca until you know until the very last edition of the Beca Cuitca, who was host at, at the Universidad de Itela, was officially called Beca Cuitca. But until that, it had many many different names, which basically what Alexander was explaining was um, you know was a gathering of artists. It was mostly. Uh, you know, gathering group and discussion about the the work, and and uh, and that was the, the the core or the essence of the program. It wasn't it wasn't much more than that. Uh, I think um, to keep it very simple or very um, very frugal in a way, it was one of the key things for you know, for the development of that, because it was a nomadic program. It, it happens uh, in relation to different institutions. And, um, and Alejandra and I had the chance to work together within that, that program uh, in the second edition of the program, which was host at the f uh, uh, what is now Fundación Proa in Buenos Aires. Uh, for those that you know, it's, it's a very prominent uh, art exhibition space, and and also with a very uh, rich 
program and the second and, and the following program so yes. which was in um, hosted by by several institutional uh, I don't know how you call like uh, threats I would say uh, threats is okay just linear como, ¿sí? como convergencias and uh, and so that put us to that we've been talking about mostly about your work but in general about art or about us or about whatever for a long time yes and uh, so it's uh, it's familiar for me to be uh, <laughs> with you talking about your work and and um, and so it's uh, I don't know, it's, it's something I always like to talk up with artists about their work and ultimately it's not necessarily about um, me knowing what or having a, a point of view that somehow is clear or more, I don't know, um, or simply because you're visiting another artist's studio, you, you might enter in a studio knowing or or having a, some kind of, of, uh, of uh, illumination about what the artist should go. I mean, that was never my approach. It was always trying to, because normally when you go to visit another artist studio, myself or you, we always be in trouble. We always have, you know, something wrong is going on. And I think the point is to feel the same way. Not, I mean, not, not to not to bring some kind of enlightenment into that, but also feel that whatever thing is going is going on you you could be you could share that uh, that vision you could but but being on the side of i mean you try i was trying all the time to put myself on on the side of 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 the of the artist not so much on the on a i mean not so much coming from as i said from a i don't know some kind of of uh, illumination yeah i don't know if, if it's clear Anyway, um, I'm glad we keep talking now. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Uh, do you remember anything in particular about meeting Alejandra, the work of Alejandra back then? Yes, yeah, I did, I do. Um, uh, our conversations were always very abstract in a way, but also at some point, um, because Alejandra had a very, um, I think it's the same way that she approached her own work, which is sometimes that, it makes you feel that you have no idea what's going to happen or what's going on, and and suddenly it's all evident. And and even if it's not evident, it is, it is what's happening. And I also, I think the the way we had to talk about her work was always very elliptical. We sometimes we spend time and not, um, and she had very formal um, titles. Yes, <laughs> titles is a big thing, and and your titles are great, and uh, and I have to say your. You, you, you're a very good uh, titler. You're a good teacher in titling. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you very much. But I remember that you have very specific questions about what should I do with this corner? What do you think about this? You know, like like very specific. Um, you know, like I, I don't know if we were ever maybe that because the date it would possible relate. But you had a specific questions about um, questions to yourself. I don't know if there were questions to me. I think you, sh you, what you did is to share your, you know, whatever was you were able to to conceptualize and and, and share with me. And I think uh, those, I, I I kind of believe that that we approach her work very much on the making, not so much about uh, a conceptualization or as a, or a. I don't think that I don't remember that we whether we ever talk about um, this work is about this. Of course, I'm sure Alejandra has had thought about it, and but not. I don't think we we share that so much. I don't know if you had a specific memory of of, of that. I remember. Um because of the way I work, it's always for me. For myself, it looks like I don't know what I'm doing or I am giving myself to this not knowing what I'm doing. But I remember you gave me some solace <laughs> in the idea of that what I was doing was panoramic. <laughs> and so in that panorama, uh -huh. I relied. Okay. And because if I, if I work thinking that one work is just that work, 
it's very, it gives me a lot of anxiety. But if yeah, there is a panorama, yeah. uh, I can... I can negotiate in between works in a way, and that I think I kept until today. Yeah. I mean, and you know what? I remember once we have this conversation because I think we were both very lost, and mm -hmm. sometimes we we, we come uh, some kind of agreement to think of that w that a, a hint or or an intuition was was just enough. If it happens, if that intuition. Um, um, I don't know how to say in English. Fue revelada o com, no? Revealed, Revealed uh, in once in the painting, the painting or in a very, very uh, f a fugaz, uh, very, you know, like, uh, um, you know. Glimpse. Glimpse, yes, that's a word. Mm -hmm. That should be all we could trust and that should be enough. It should be, f it, it, that, that would be, <laughs> so that we, we, we could put a lot of confidence if that happens, even if it was so room. <laughs> it, it should be uh, all we have, and, and that should be enough to build the, you know, whatever was going to be built af out of that, mm -hmm. instead of of making test over test over test, uh, like like yeah. putting the, the... Of course, we I'm sure we have put your work under a scrutiny and some kind, but not a judgmental, some kind of... The scrutiny was about... Let's see what's what's going on here. Let's see what it goes. I mean, I think between artists is a pretty much a standard way to talk about the work. No, it's it's uh, it's. You know, well, it's that's interesting because um, we are historians always try to classify, to organize, and something beautiful about Ines Katz and Saint Text in the book is how she talks about the difficulty of classification and the difficulty to you know, fit Alejandra, but at the same time, there's a coherence that is a little bit like the panorama you were saying, and that comes a little bit from this instinctive uh, procedure. And I wanted to ask you, because I know Alejandra's uh, work methodology very well, which is extremely chaotic and at the same time extremely rational. Um, and you can almost, like, I talk with her a lot on the phone, and you can almost, like, know what kind of painting she's doing according to the sound of the brush, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, if you know her work. Um, and she does that a lot, for example. She paints while she talks on the phone. And that's interesting because it's a way to maybe disconnect from what she's doing and maybe detach. I, I always thought that was some sort of methodology she had. Um, and I wanted to ask you, um, and because I imagine this is something that comes up a lot also when you do these exchanges at the Quitka program about how to deal with methodology. Um. Well, at, at the Vika there were no really methodology except the one that you established with the other artists. So that's, that's the beauty of it. I mean, it's, it's just something that, of course, uh, I think it's at least what I feel. It's, it's something that we, we don't know. Uh, the whole point I wanted to make before is that I don't want to be the one that knows. Uh, if, if I have to be someone, I want to be the one who doesn't know as well. So that's, that's where I, I position myself. That's, that's the key thing. So every time I walk into another artist's uh, studio, it will be a different story. Sometimes the conversation will be built from the work or sometimes from, you know, from another, I mean, from an experience. Um, and as... Um, and so, so that's that's pretty much what 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 what's going on, and uh, in the what was going on in, in in the program. Of course, the because there was many many artists, and and we were lucky that there were many applicants, and so I was very happy to work what I thought is was the more talented people that was applying at that at that time. It was a very uh, you know very. Um, um, important uh, selection of, of, of artists. Um, so I cannot talk about really the methodology except that of giving solace, maybe. I don't, I don't feel like I am the one that has to bring the, the tension, the, 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 um, the, the art. I mean, yes, I could talk about urgency, but not so much about bringing the, the yeah, the, to create fear or tension. I think there is so much fear and tension outside our studios that you know, there's no point to bring that plus. I mean, this, every artist knows that it's difficult, that it's bad, that it's, you know, that 
we eventually you know going to fail i mean there's all those things we we, we all know it's uh, i don't f feel whether you could call this as a methodology or just simply a way to to be I don't really feel that I should be the one that brings the... But there is the a methodology in that also, like to have somebody to stand in front of the work that is pretty raw and in a moment where we were all kind of giving ourselves also to experiment. In, uh, it was not a moment to do what we knew what we were doing, but a moment to try new things, to to get out of what of those comfort zones. So um, your guidance and um, looking at this new thing happening, it's a methodology in a way because uh, you have somebody there that is in front of the work, looking at the work with you. Um, and in a, well, now we are tracing that there is a methodology. Yeah. I always thought you had secret plans for us though. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, you knew the world. I know, you knew the world outside <laughs> Argentina, <laughs> and there was, this is the Jenny Holzer, possible Jenny Holzer, this is, I always thought you, you had some kind of vision, or like, but you never told us. <laughs> well, basically because I didn't, so okay. that's, that's probably not the, I hardly... There is something very psychoanalytic also, yeah. like a little transferencia with the other to see the work and a, a power that we that I would well we the the the, the artists give to Guillermo also I mean in a way I, I don't know a I consultant don't know. I don't know what to do with that power <laughs> anyway I but you had it <laughs> no I mean yeah. it's um, and uh, of course you were going to ask uh, about how this relation between being in in Argentina being in in yes. New York of course uh, uh, Alejandra is, is living here for for a long time, and I was I never lived here, so I think I, um, ironically or or paradoxically, I don't have that that view from outside because basically I never live anywhere else than in Argentina. So you I'm not were, so sure. You were very troubled. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, I mean, if you are talking on a, on a, on a deck, I mean, in, in a decade where we don't had, you know, internet, yes, that was exactly. previous that. But I don't think, we, I'm pretty sure I didn't really felt that I was bringing the, uh, you know, um, things from, from my traveling. I'm oh. not sure. I mean, maybe I no, did. Information. I no information. I mean, that you, you knew firsthand the production that was happening everywhere, and we didn't. And uh, mm. I always thought that that after, maybe after when I was here, or like I in, it was an intuition that maybe you had an idea for each of the artists that where they could go or what mm. they were doing was around something, you know? Like yeah, no, I know what you mean. I mm. don't think I had. It was no. always very intuitive. And, uh, and But I'm, I'm glad you think I had, because of mm. course if you have to trust in someone, better yes. to know that he or she knows what he's doing. <laughs> but, uh, but basically, uh, no, I took the, this, you know, the, this is a very, I'm very proud of this program, and I think I took it very, very, very seriously. So, yeah. so my first goal was to protect every artist's work. So that's mm -hmm. that's a, was the main goal. But I didn't, I, don't, I didn't remember having, a, you know, a, um, mm -hmm. you know, a plan, uh, not, not at all. But mm. uh, but having said that, and what happened when you, you know, when you decided to live in New York, maybe it just came by chance and then you decided to stay. Tell us a bit about that. Well, I was in the scholarship uh, in the Centro Borges Beca, yeah. in the Beca at the Centro Borges, and in that one we got many visitors and they were giving their cards, like, <laughs> come, when you come to Paris, come and visit me. When you come to New York, come and visit me. When you come to, I don't know where, come and visit me. And I was there, like, totally in Argentina, and um, so uh, one day it happened that there were no many places to show. I think um, I have done the shows that I could do, and then the next step would be, uh, there was no Malva, for example, at that point. Yeah. There was nothing compared to now. There was the Easy, uh, the Alianza Francesa, the Caic was already finishing. Yeah. 
and the Centro Borges, which was not really happening, nothing very interesting. I mean, it was like, and uh, so, um, and then there was the Muse Museo de Arte Moderno, which was for really big figures, mm -hmm. which I wasn't, and then, um, so one day I got a show, I think, and I sold a painting, and I came to visit all the cars. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the Rolodex. What? The Rolodex that you had. <laughs> the Rolodex. Yeah. <laughs> no, there was no Rolodex in Argentina. No. No. <laughs> carrots. The word carrots. <laughs> and then uh, that's how I came. Okay. And. Um, and then my friend Ines was already in Bard College, and um, and my friend Cecilia uh, came one year before. Yeah. And so it it seemed that like there was like lots of friends here, and uh, I wasn't decided to stay. Mm. I <clears throat> I came just very casually, and then I went to visit friends to Europe, and. Uh, and it was so nice to be able to travel this way, that way, come here, go back, go to Argentina, and come back. And and I did that for a while until I had to officialize more my situation, like with, and I stayed more. I, but it was happening that I, when I was going back to Argentina, I would I would uh, get the notification that I was uh, accepted as Cohegan School mm -hmm. of Painting. Yeah. So I would come back to Cohegan. Yeah. Then when I was in Cohegan, uh, somebody in Argentina wanted me to do a show, and and I began this kind of triangle with paintings, uh, painting in Venice, coming to New York, going to Buenos Aires, and it was really nice. And then. Um, then um, the situation in Argentina began, I don't know, and, and then people began to say, don't come back, don't come back, don't come back. Of course. People yeah. still say. <laughs> people say, each time yeah. is worse. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they don't know that living in New York has... Yes, exactly. It's, it's tricky also. Yes, it's very tricky. How do you feel that living in New York had you know, inform, evolve, or change your work? Did it, did it change much? Did you feel that it's still connected? I mean, I believe it's really connected with what you've done in Argentina, but, but it's, uh, then could you make some kind of, uh, like, uh, you know, like, uh, can you identify mm -hmm. moments in your, in your paintings that are related to where you were living? I, I, I for sure uh, detect the moment I went for the first time to Europe, mm -hmm. that for sure it was like a kind of, corruption for me like to give myself to baroque and to the pleasure of uh, beauty and uh, like in a different way than before w was more like a pre a prejudice to me like uh, i wanted things to be kind of modern and geometrical and once i go to europe i found a pleasure in a different kind of aesthetics and then being in new york um yes uh, it was, it, it's like something that I still battle inside with that is like the level of, of what you can do and whatever you have around you to do things is much wider. So I began having like a, this uh, open possibility to think whatever I wanted to do. Like it's in, in, in Argentina, I've always felt I work and my, how do how you say, astucia. Um, my cleverness was to do things with what I had. And here in New York, I didn't have to do that. I could ask myself, what do I want to do? And think that. And that for me was like an abyss, like really a very difficult moment. And uh, in terms of the painting, I don't know, but I think there I, uh, perhaps the work became more installative. Um, yeah. Yeah, I remember the one you did at Museo del Barrio, which is the, the eye, you know? The, yeah, the, one, the wallpaper. The wall, oh, that, we, we, I think we just saw an image of that. And that was very early when you came to, to New York. No, yes, two was, years yeah, after. Yeah. Yeah. Or three, no, a little, yeah, three yeah. years, yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and that, I mean, that's, of, of course, what, what you were saying about comparing what the, the way you might approach a work in Buenos Aires or the one do you approach in New York? It seems to be very um, le legitimate, no? uh, both ways. It seems like you could, 
you could reverse completely the other way around and, and, and saying, because I had the one I, you were mentioning in New York, that you could, you, you would be almost wanted the one you, you had in, in Argentina. So, yes. so I think it... Now it, I'm it, there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, because it's, it's you know, all, all access to the work are, are, are possible, so it doesn't seem that, that there is a better one. Um, no, no, okay. no. I mean, the, of course, there are many, many uh, possibilities. But, but as you described it, both works in, in you know, it could, it could reverse easily. Yes. Like going from, from this to that and that from this. Yes, yes. But the fact of, like, uh, at that point was Chelsea, before was Soho, the, the end of Soho, the beginning of Chelsea, or, like, to go and see, I don't know, 30 shows in one day at the level of... Uh, museum level that we, I mean, uh, in Argentina that didn't happen. In a way, I miss also, uh, I miss a lot, like being able to grab the scene. Here I of can course. never grab yeah. the scene, and I'm always like in my back, like suffering from what I cannot do, you know? Like, of course. Uh, yeah. And what about your peers? <laughs> I mean, the other artists that you get in touch or you dialogue or, or I mean, what's, there the is something that you miss from what yeah, you say? Yeah, I, I miss. Hmm? Yeah, I miss the the contention mattress. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, it's a, here we 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 just text for a week before we can talk. Mm -hmm. It's like texting, 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 texting to have half an hour to talk, and then organize. Yes, it's like that, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. Well, they're all, I mean, depending on what you wanted to talk, I mean, maybe it's a, <laughs> it's a very serious thing well, to discuss. No, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's much less, uh, you're much more alone and mm -hmm. um, with a lot, I mean, it's, it's very intense. Have you ever thought about teaching or, or doing, a, you know, studio exchange or a studio, studio visiting, which is something you could do in the U.S.? Uh, it's something mm -hmm. that we would, you would, would like or you'd be interesting at all? Um, I could be interested, but I always think that the system here is so different in a way that Absolutely, the yeah. the institution mm. of the of the studies is is framed in a very different way that I don't know if I can get in that. You know, it's no, like, no of yeah. course, of course, no. It's I'm just um, saying, you know, in, in a fantasy, what what yes. would be your your. I mean, no, I only taught, uh, I mean, I used to have uh, students in Argentina. I remember that, yeah, that's what I'm asking. And then yeah. I went to do uh, one short period to the Ditela, okay. as, uh, like a seminar mm -hmm. with a workshop. Yeah. And it, it was very nice, but I have to say that it really makes me channel with that so much that I cannot do much anything yeah. else. You know? Oh, no, no, I, I, yeah. I know what you mean. I think I... I when I stopped the studio program, it was I was totally fried. I mean, every time I came home, it was like <laughs> my my head was so invaded by by other artists' voices and and images that I I, I really needed to have you know like a a day for for, for, for recovery for recovery, <laughs> and then you know I'll I'll be visiting again, and yeah. uh, and many times I was wondering to myself what what is the story about you being able to influence as a, you know, as a mentor, as a teacher, other artists, while it's actually all the, the, other, the other way. I mean, it's, it's how I would be avoiding being influenced by so many artists all the time, which it's happened, it's something I, I, I had in, in, my, in, in, in my practice. It's, it's sometimes I was doing something and I, I was wondering myself, what, what this has to do with anything I was doing? And then I, I might connect that gesture or that moment or, or even a pictorial, you know, it could be a very tiny thing to something more, you know, more, more substantial uh, to maybe a conversation or an artist that I just visited, the, the, you know, the previous day or the previous week. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, I think it's, it's a, I mean, it's, it's, it's also very dangerous in a way. I mean, it's a very yeah. rich but very dangerous. Well, something interesting about that is that, I mean, what you're talking is also about circles of belonging, right? And in a way, in Buenos Aires, your circles of belonging have to do, obviously, about your social affinities, but in a way, also, in, in the arts with people that somehow 
do things that you're interested in and somehow might match your taste and you might be, you know, um, and that might maybe share a language. But I think something interesting that happens in New York, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that you have multiple circles of belonging. New York is huge, but at the same time, it's an overlapping of tiny circles, right? And it's not like, um, you know, like people belong to many circles. And I see that in Alejandra's uh, social life and also in her, like, artist interaction uh, that, you know, you have the group of the Argentine artists, the group of the Latin American artists, the group that went to Skohegan, the group that, you know, uh, was around, you know, the INSA activities, you know, and things like that. Um, and I wonder if that offers more variety in a way, or how do you feel about uh, something we were discussing also, which is like the relationship in between the inside and the outside? And uh, how do you feel with regards to other circles of New York? Inside and outside of what? Of the different circles of, you know, of New York, your different social circles, your different circles of affinities with other artists that are, like in Buenos Aires, you know, it's tiny in a way compared to here. Um, and here you have maybe more variety of influences and variety of acquaintances. I don't know, but in, in, the, in the daily life, it's not that I interact that much yeah. with other artists, that's the true. I may talk to other disciplines of, of the art world, but not that much with other artists, because we are all like focusing, you know? It's mm -hmm. like uh, New York, as it's so vast, it teaches you to be very selective and to be very, like, if you go out, like you, I mean, it's very, very hard. So, um, I mean, that uh, the, and the fact of having a family and, and kids makes me be very focused and not much, I don't think, I mean, it's, so, it's social life and work, but in the work, I don't know if I interact that much. I mean, I only, that's another thing that happens more when you grow in your own thing is that you see who you're working with. So I interact with the people I'm working in a project. That's yeah. that's project no, no, I, based. I agree, I agree with you. Um, but actually, I think it's happening ultimately to all of us, no matter where we are, as we could grow older or we are not kids or very young anymore. Because at some point, you start to be, you know, more clearly more selective, and somehow yes. your studio is not a place where everybody i'm saying so this eventually where yes. you know i think i i don't know i see myself and even like a slow i i like to to make things last more than before i mm -hmm. think i enjoy each time more what i'm working on and i don't want to i mean i i i am I, to trick myself i became more sophisticated in what i do so it's harder and and the beat go, goes higher yeah. so it's like i need more time, if not less. That's very yeah, strange yeah. because it would. That's true. Um, yeah. Ali, let me ask you something because uh, I mean I'm an artist that relies very much on on having done books with with other people, but really around my work, and I Michel enjoy has that. Has a lot of experience. In I books. enjoy that process. How many books did you do? Many. <laughs> I don't know some. Yeah. Um, but I know I was. Uh, my, it was. A, it was a question that I. Yeah. I enjoyed that process very much. It was a pause. It was. A, I don't know. There was so many things gathering in the, in the. You know, in making a book. So since this is the reason why we're tonight, I wanted to ask you about this book in particular and how was this process and you know what what you, what you can tell us about that this part, this book. <laughs> it was very stressful. Um, it was. Uh, I had no idea that it was so much work, like it was. Um, it's also the like I had it in my back since two thousand and eight. Like I wanted to do this book, and I was keeping all these files just in case of the book, and and it became like to to have my information safe became something very tense to me and then if I would have all the information of the works and and the pictures and the pictures were like slides from other times mm. and then the scans were so for me uh, was something that I really needed to do to 
to release that responsibility of having all this from the past. And um, and once we found, it's, it's working like that in my work too, like once we found a structure for this to happen, everything flowed perfectly well. And, um, but um, yeah, more than anything, um, Yes, it's uh, it's more like the mandate to do the book that was the stressful part. That once we we were on top of the idea and what we were going to do, uh, well, it was work. It was a lot of work, but it just work. I mean, it um, and um, and it, I think it, it the 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 idea allowed allowed me to to be very natural. Uh, the way I think my my work, and I used to have a website that I de I designed a long time ago, that was also very like you had many ways to get in and to get and many ways of seeing the work, and other means took that in in consideration when they had the idea to happen. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and. Um, I mean, you also comment um, that the idea, so just explains the audience a little bit. Uh, you will have a chance to see and hopefully buy the book uh, right after the talk. But I mean, the, the book has plates like any artist book, but at the same time, it has the shadow of other works, like if they were like hand. Ghosts. Yeah, ghosts. Mm -hmm. Love that idea. And, and that also has to do with the cover, which you can unfold into, you know, has multiple works. Let me show it like this. Mm -hmm. The inside cover is a ghost itself, and, it, and this turns into, you know, like a poster almost, that, um, that has the multiple. But uh, that also has to do a lot with uh, your painting and with the idea of the wallpaper and with this exhibition that you did, cuadro por cuadro, painting by painting. Um, Yes, it, that's why. Like once everything got like in this vortex <laughs> to one place, it had to do with everything. It had to do um, the way they thought it. It was like they were trying to build a wallpaper with the paintings, uh, but at the same time, it looked like a show that we did in Argentina called Painting by Painting, where I would uh, we did like three hangings in the same space, and we would mark with with black the history of where the other painting was before. And so it was like a past and present and something very subtle that would mark the space in a very radical way. And, um, and then this panoramic approach that I have to my work, it's in the ghosts in a way, because for me, when you're seeing one painting, you're seeing all the rest. And so it's a, it's a way of showing you're you're focusing on this one, but also you have this, 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 and uh, and the wallpaper that is full of figures at the end, uh, it's constructed in a way that the book is all zoomed in diagonal through a line, and the rest are ghosted. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uh, this is not casual, or this is very thoughtful, and and the zoom of the book goes in a specific way. Yeah, you mean it's not, it's not, it's not random. It's and, not, no. uh, and uh, did you have the, the, the impression that by working in, in the book uh, with the images and, and uh, did you have a, some kind of, I don't know, whether it's a conclusion or, or maybe a, a thought about yes, uh, what uh, you have done all these years? <laughs> Yeah, I I loved the, I I loved I it always happens to me that I think when I'm approaching the next show that I'm having a very different idea. And then I go into the idea and then oh, it was the same idea but like uh, and it's always about the same thing, the core of it. So that was something that I realized doing the book and also like this like loops like like you go back and you go back to something very similar and 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 it was very beautiful because once the structure was uh, decided i let them i let them 
do whatever they wanted with the flow of the images. Okay. And they would mix images from 96 with 2011, and they would look contemporary. Yeah. So that was something very nice for me to see how things get along, even a gap of 15 years were in yeah. the middle. No, no, that's true. I mean, I've been looking in the book, and, and, and you have that experience of seeing works that they, I mean, they feel very, 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 very parallel almost. Yes. And, uh, and also different, but still you feel that that they belong to, you know, to, to some, some, some kind of, of, of uh, I mean, they belong to something bigger than, yes. uh, than that. I think that's, that's a beauty. And, uh, and what do you see now in terms of, of, you know, what you're doing in the studio after the book? Is, is, uh, would, would that would in some, would the book mean something in that? Uh, yes, it seems to clarify all this and it, uh, to have all the history. It's, it's a relief to have it out. Yeah. It's a total relief. And I, and I thought it was going to be a very important point of, of, of a breaking point. But then now... I'm working on a show at the Malva Museum. Yes, I know, yeah. That's great. Which, it's a little influenced by the book now, <laughs> <laughs> because I have a curator that wants to put works from different times, and I don't understand why, yeah. but I think he is also influenced by this approach of mixing works from different times. Mm -hmm. So I thought I was done with the past, and I was done with uh, this, and I could go to something new, but now this show in the museum, it's making me again, and and. But that, that that's something that bothers you, or, or do you do you accept that as a you know? Well, I thought I was done now with the book. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, um, I, I I I didn't know that I had to, but I, I now I'm in automatic pilot and just I do it. But um, uh, in a way, at the beginning, it was like I thought I was done with the book, and and it was done. I wanted to go to something new. Uh, so I couldn't really uh, ha have that moment yet. Like no, I wonder whether we artists do books in order to say, okay, and this will be a fresh start, and and we have this fantasy of 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 becoming, you know, some someone else or another, or, yes. or starting a new yes. life. Yes. <laughs> but it never happens. I think it's at, at least in that way. I don't think it it. it, it I may be reaching a, a point of my life where I, I will have to... It's very hard for me because it's the first time that this happens to me, like this kind of obsession with my past, <laughs> in a way. Like, uh, And I'm not there at all. But uh, So I think this is a new thing to negotiate with that and to continue. It's like something new in my daily practice that I have to give a space to that okay, be patient, do it, and then I will have to learn to be able to do both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think something beautiful about uh, the book um, and the, is that it goes back a little bit to what we were talking at the beginning about the book. It's a conversation with other artists. The way you made this book, it's edited by a friend who is an artist, Alejandro Cesarco, it has text, uh, Ines, who is a friend, but it's also, you know, she's a curator, so she's the exception in that regard. Then you have text by Karin, who is an artist, and your interview is done with Valentina Liernur. So there's something about the dialogue with other artists and the way you're doing it. Even the show at Malva, in a way, you know, uh, was born as a conversation with another artist. So I think there's a, there's a space there for a different revision of the past that is not so museographic. Yes. That is very productive. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the, the show at Malva um, uh, is the future because uh, it's something that didn't happen yet and will allow me allow me to see this in a space also. And it's yeah, it was born as a dialogue with Leda Katunda, which Guillermo brought me a catalog in the Beca Quitka. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <That, laughs> Well, it was not a Jenny Holzer, would it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Jenny Holzer was not for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. No, I said an example. <laughs> it no, was no. <laughs> you are clearly not the Jenny Holzer. Of no, 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 it wasn't that. That was not my case. No, no, but I, I said so. something to say something. Like, no, no, it's funny. I'm no, I remember that, that I s probably, I, I, yeah, I saw, I, I know Leda from a long, long time ago. 
and um, and and I don't know, but I think, yeah, we we talk about her work, and probably you were interested. Yeah, I was in doing us. works like out of the square at that point. Yeah. And uh, like, I mean, it's funny that after so many years you come I together said, to to do this show. I yes. look, look forward to to see it, and um, yeah, that's that's something something curious. Um, anyway, I think that maybe with that beautiful connection of the beginning and the end and <laughs> the circularity of time, the future, and we can keep with the conversation with other artists and friends um, in uh, the reception that we have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Alejandra, thank you so mm -hmm. much, Guillermo, and everybody, please join us. <laughs>